Previously, we compared America's two most iconic Pacific warfighters, the F-4U Corsair and the F-6 F Hellcat, drawing the conclusion that the Hellcat, with its massive kill count, and the Corsair, with its statistical performance advantages, were likely on an equal footing at the end of the day. But what comparisons can we make about aircraft operating in the European theater? Two US aircraft are well known for their late war operations, the P-51 Mustang and the P-47 Thunderbolt. Which of these were better aircraft? Both the Thunderbolt and Mustang differed greatly in terms of design, but despite their differences, when it came to combat, both would emerge as near equal matches in many regards. These two aircraft had very different power plants. The Mustang, most famously, used the Rolls-Royce Merlin, a 27-litre V12 engine, whilst the P-47 used the radial Pratt & Whitney R2800, the same engine used on the Corsair and Hellcat in the Pacific. For the sake of argument, Let's ignore the earlier versions of the Mustang, as these versions were powered by an early model of the Allison V1710. This V12 engine had poor high-altitude performance and simply could not compete with Luftwaffe aircraft. The P-51 B and C variants overcame this with the Merlin engine. This engine was modified and licence-built by the US as the Packard V1650, which was fitted into the P-51D, which arrived in 1944. The final version worth considering was the P-51H, which outperformed the D model in many areas. However, these aircraft, 2,000 of which were ordered in anticipation for a land invasion of Japan, never saw combat in World War II. So our comparison here will focus primarily on the performance of both the P-51D and the P-47D variants. Let's start our comparison with the combat records of both aircraft. Both entered service in 1942, serving with the RAF in various capacities. Generally, both aircraft were used to escort bombers on long-range missions into enemy territory. This was initially the primary role of the Thunderbolt, but would later be handed off to the Mustang. As far as kill count is concerned, the Mustang reigned supreme, with somewhere between 4,200 and 4,950 claimed victories, unmatched by any other US aircraft in the European theater. The Thunderbolt, on the other hand, held between 2,600 and 3,700 claimed victories, significantly lower, but nevertheless an impressive record. The kill ratios of both aircraft fall behind that of the nearly 20 to 1 win-loss ratio of the F-6F Hellcat in the Pacific, and it must be said that the kill ratios of the Thunderbolt and Mustang are heavily disputed. Most claims pin the Mustang's kill ratio at 10 to 1, and the Thunderbolt's ratio at 4.6 to 1. Much of this uncertainty comes down to disputes over air victory claims. The lower ratios of both aircraft, compared to the 11 to 1 kill ratio of the Corsair and near 20 to 1 ratio of the Hellcat in the Pacific, could be attributed to the higher number of experienced Luftwaffe pilots, although this is pure conjecture. As mentioned in the previous Corsair versus Hellcat comparison, a kill count must be considered within the operational context in the Pacific theater, for example, the number of experienced Japanese pilots decreased as the war dragged on. The same was the case for the Germans, who, despite possessing an overwhelming majority of World War II aces, were short on experienced pilots after six long years of warfare. While both aircraft initially served as long-range support for bombers based in England in 1942, over time, the Mustang would become the primary long-range support fighter for such missions, while the Thunderbolt would focus on other roles. And it is within this rather complex context that we compare the Thunderbolt and Mustang. Most test results place the P-51D climb rate from sea level at around 3,400 feet per minute, whilst evaluation of the late war P-51H model saw that number increase to 5,120 feet per minute, perhaps the best climb rate of any American prop aircraft during the war. Surprisingly, evaluations demonstrated that the earlier P-51B model actually outperformed the D model with a climb rate of 4,400 feet per minute. Early P-47D variants had a climb rate of 2,300 feet per minute, while some later D variants achieved climb rates of up to 3,300 feet per minute. These late war P-47Ds demonstrated an increase in climb rate performance with an increase in altitude, peaking at around 10,000 feet. The P-51D, in contrast, 
held maximum climb rate potential at sea level, which immediately began to drop off above 4,000 feet. In terms of speed, both aircraft were exceptionally fast within their class, capable of surpassing 400 miles per hour. This was achieved at higher altitudes, and in most cases, higher speeds were necessary for the aircraft to perform optimally. The P-51B was known to be capable of reaching 450 miles per hour, achievable at around 28,000 feet. The P-51D model performed similarly, with a maximum speed of 440 miles per hour, which it could achieve slightly lower, at 24,000 feet. The Thunderbolt was almost equally matched. Late war P-47Ds were clocked at achieving 445 miles per hour, albeit at an even lower altitude of 23,000 feet. The one exception was the later N model of the Thunderbolt, which was claimed to have been capable of reaching 470 miles per hour under the right conditions. At sea level, the Mustang held the advantage, but not by much. P-51s were clocked at reaching almost 380 miles per hour, whilst P-47Ds maxed out at around 345 miles per hour. If anything, this latter comparison is more important as the later P-51D held the speed authority closer to sea level, where dogfights were more likely to descend to. At high altitudes, exceeding 35,000 feet, both aircraft were equally capable of 400 miles per hour. Thus, in terms of speed, it could be said that both aircraft were equally matched if we smooth out slight variations in altitude performances. Both aircraft in this respect also retained similar service ceilings. The P-47D could operate up to 42,000 feet, whilst the P-51D could operate at just over 41,000 feet. Again, both aircraft on an equal footing. However, the range of the two aircraft differed significantly. Although both served as long-range escorts for bombing missions over Europe, the Mustang's capability was practically unmatched. The Thunderbolt could reach near 900 miles at optimal altitude and could be outfitted with large external drop tanks, increasing its range to somewhere around 1,400 miles. There were later tanks that could extend the range to 1,900 miles. In contrast, the P-51D could fly up to 1,200 miles just on internal fuel. However, it was often fitted with external tanks and could fly just over 1,600 miles when fully fueled. Late war P-47N variants were improved to match the P-51, in some cases capable of flying 2,000 miles. Maneuverability is another area where we find significant differences between the aircraft. Whilst the Thunderbolt certainly wasn't slack in a dogfight, the Mustang would outperform it by a large margin when it came to roll and turn rates. The P-47 was simply too heavy to compete in this regard, weighing more than any other single-seat piston aircraft produced by the US at the time. Many pilots who flew the P-47 were later retrained to fly the P-51, and it was a common testimony to say that the Mustang was their preferred aircraft. The Mustang's improved maneuverability and speed, which allowed it to compete with late-war German aircraft such as the BF-109K4, is what probably won many pilots over. On the other hand, the smaller number of pilots who preferred the P-47 would cite the Thunderbolt safety as a significant factor. When it came to the safety factor, the Thunderbolt was more robust than the Mustang. The Thunderbolt was known to be capable of taking multiple hits without compromising the aircraft, while the Mustang was far more vulnerable. Many say this was due to the Thunderbolt's use of an air-cooled radial engine. The Mustang relied on liquid cooling, thus any hits to the coolant lines would result in leaks, and soon after, the overheated engine would seize. The Thunderbolt's airframe was a stronger overall build, and pilots recall the aircraft was better suited for emergency landings. The lighter Mustang, however, had a higher chance of breaking apart on ground impact and also flipping over the nose when the air intake under the fuselage hit ground or water. The Thunderbolt had wider and stronger landing gear with extreme heavy-duty tires, making it easier to land and safer on makeshift airstrips. Both aircraft were armed with 50 caliber machine guns. This was the standard for the US Air Force and would remain as such until the Korean War. The P-51D had six such 50 caliber machine guns, whilst the P-47D had eight. The Thunderbolt also carried twice the amount of ammunition, 3,400 rounds, whilst the Mustang carried 1,800. It is hard to gauge how much of a difference the increased armament of the Thunderbolt made, although it likely helped. Obviously, more guns firing simultaneously increased the possibility of a direct hit. Toward the end of the war, many German aircraft were using various combinations of machine guns and cannons. 
A single cannon round could knock out an aircraft, whereas a spray of machine gun fire may find the target more easily than a cannon. When it came to bombing duties, the Thunderbolt was the more capable aircraft. Its larger airframe allowed it to carry two 1,000-pound bombs, one on each wing, and a 500-pound bomb under the fuselage, thus allowing for 2,500 pounds of explosive. The extra weight did require a long runway for takeoff, but the solidly built Thunderbolt kept pilots safer from ground fire, could deliver more firepower per sortie, albeit at shorter ranges than the P-51. In the final analysis, we find both aircraft were very different, demonstrating strengths in differing roles. In the years following World War II, the P-51, later called the F-51, performed well as a fighter, escort and light strike aircraft in the early days of the Korean War, but was eventually tasked for close air support missions. In the close air support role, the Mustang struggled, being prone to damage from ground fire. At the time, pilots believed that the P-47 Thunderbolt would serve this role perfectly, given its heavy armor and greater firepower. However, their requests to fly the aircraft would be denied, and Thunderbolts would not see the Korean War. One cannot help to think that the Thunderbolt would have thrived in such a role, leaving the Mustangs for fighter escort missions. Nevertheless, the Douglas A-1 Skyraider, a heavy prop aircraft built at the end of World War II, fulfilled the close air support role rather well in the Korean War and also later in Vietnam. If we were to draw a final conclusion, it would not be unreasonable to suggest that during World War II, the P-51 Mustang was the better aircraft overall. Whilst the Thunderbolt was safer and could go further with more, the Mustang was the more agile aircraft that could get in a fight and kill the enemy at twice the rate of a Thunderbolt. Killing before being killed was a supremely motivating priority, and given the Luftwaffe's aerial arsenal, the Mustang offered exceptional performance for the task at hand. This is not to dismiss the importance of the Thunderbolt. It was a remarkable aircraft, serving its role well in World War II, having achieved thousands of victories and helping secure Allied victories throughout southern Europe and the Mediterranean.